days. Stephen. Your identities. A mask to hide the scars. Embrace it. Experience the sixth episode of that. Only on Disney Plus. It's time. Stephen. There he is. Hello, man in the mirror. I know you're scared. A bit, yeah. I know you're confused. You weren't supposed to see any of this. What are you? you sure you want to know? Mark, you look different. I can't tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. Am I like some sort of secret agent? It's a little more complicated than that. We protect the vulnerable and deliver justice. This is the best, worst day of my life. You really don't remember our adventures or our life together. God, I wish I could. I don't know how to explain what's been happening. I can't tell the difference between lies and dreams. All of the things you've done brought you to this moment. Embrace it. You look different. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my new Marvel Moon Knight trailer video. There's a lot of footage from episode one and the other earlier episodes. I think they include a little bit of footage from later on, but not every single episode. There's six total. I will be doing videos for all the episodes. We're doing a giveaway for Disney Plus memberships because it's starting this week. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just leave your favorite Easter egg from the trailers on the video to enter. Also talk a little bit about what the actors have said about the series being connected to other MCU projects. There's a little bit of confusion about where this connects with everything else, where all the crossovers are going to happen, and how this references what's happening in the MCU right now, because there's a lot of really big stuff happening. We just saw the multiverse break during Spider-Man No Way Home. Doctor Strange kind of fixed everything at the end with his big spell. The only difference with those particular characters, like the ones that showed up in the cracks of reality, is that they were characters that knew that a version of Peter Parker was a version of Spider-Man. They're going to continue to break reality in a much bigger way during Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness. There's a bunch of trailer footage of that that I've done videos for. But there's also Thor 4, Love and Thunder. There's a lot of other stuff going on too, so I will address that during different parts of the video. But a lot of this brand new footage that we haven't seen before mostly shows Dr. Arthur Harrow inside this chamber, inside this Egyptian tomb where Mark Spector essentially dies and is reborn as Moon Knight. Although this looks like it's happening during a couple different places. The way they shot the series is kind of a Rashomon style. So you pick up after his origin story, but then you flash back to the actual origin story. So it jumps around in the timeline of Moon Knight quite a bit. For the most part, they said that a lot of the present day of the series after he's become Moon Knight takes place in the London area. But a lot of him actually becoming the Moon Knight character takes place in Egypt. Like you see them in ancient Egypt, walking across the sands, walking into tombs, looking at all these artifacts. You see him in this Egyptian temple, falling into the water, becoming a version of Moon Knight. So if you remember later in the Fight Club movie, when things got really crazy with the way they played with perspective, like who am I right now? Am I the Edward Norton character or am I Tyler Durden? What's going on with Tyler Durden? It doesn't make any sense. They're kind of taking it in that direction. The only difference in this series is that a lot of the footage you see is basically what you get during the series. And we're mostly just seeing in the trailers that it's Stephen Grant and Mark Spector. They're actually two different versions of Moon Knight that people have been talking about. There's Mark Spector Moon Knight, like in the full costume with the wraps over his head, the crescent darts that he pulls out of his chest, the classic truncheon that you see him wielding. He pulls that from his back. That's what those two sticks are when you see him beating people with the sticks. The reason why you don't see him using him in this scene here when he turns around to the bus with the big GRC ad in the background is because they're on his back. But you also see him in the Mr. Knight persona, which is sort of like the world's greatest detective persona wearing the white suit, but it's still the Moon Knight costume, like it still forms the wraps around him. It just looks more like an actual suit and tie. That's sort of like the less hardcore version of Moon Knight that he becomes when he's liaising with police or when he's talking to people. When Arthur Harrow, his henchmen, start attacking him when he gets into big fights, he switches back to the normal Moon Knight persona, but he can still fight people when he's Mr. Knight. Like you see him holding the pieces of the truncheon here. The scene of him actually becoming Moon Knight when he's inside this tomb here, it looks like it's before he's become Moon Knight for the first time. It's not totally clear when Dr. Arthur Harrow, Ethan Hawke's character, finds out about the tomb here and finds a way to enter it and use some of this god power. 
And the way that the notes about the show talk about it, the way they use the prop, is that even though you see it animated like it rises up in his hand here, it works a little bit like a compass. The way they show Arthur Harrow using all the different type of powers also seems like he's using the power of several different gods, not just a single god. Really good example is that you see him with the tattoo on his arm that moves. That's a tattoo representing Anubis. The scales represent the scales of life and death. Historically in the Egyptian faith as part of their mythology, when someone died, their heart would be weighed by Anubis and they would have this feather test. If it would weigh more than the heart, if it would weigh less than the heart, and it was a way Anubis controlled who got into the version of the Egyptian afterlife. There's a lot of other science fiction and fantasy TV shows that have tried to use the god in a different way. He doesn't have that much of an antagonistic relationship with the other Egyptian pantheon. But remember, this is the MCU, the Marvel Universe. So Arthur Harrow could be using the power of Anubis for really bad things, even if Anubis himself doesn't intend on trying to kill Khonshu or any of the other gods. But that's the whole reason why Khonshu would want to stop Dr. Arthur Harrow. Like, he doesn't necessarily care about the affairs of man. He doesn't really care that much about Mark Spector either, only that Mark Spector is a really good opportunity for him to actually enact his will, his vengeance, on the MCU. Khonshu is the Egyptian moon god, but the other members of his pantheon are basically trapped in an alternate dimension, and they can only act inside the main MCU dimension through avatars. The whole idea with Arthur Harrow is that he's kind of an avatar, or at least he's using the power of some of these other Egyptian gods. There's a whole lot of footage of Khonshu taking Mark Spector in his Mr. Knight persona on this magical tour of the multiverse with his friend Layla with them, with her laptop, like she's typing, trying to figure out what's going on while it's all happening. This seems like Khonshu trying to explain the cosmos, like everything in reality to Mark Spector, and why it's so important for him to do what Khonshu says. He's called the Fist of Khonshu because Khonshu is also meant to be the god of vengeance. The way that Ethan Hawke talked about his character too is that because no villain actually thinks that they're the villain, they always think that they're in the right. Ethan Hawke's character, at least the way he played him in the series, is that he's also trying to get his own form of vengeance against the MCU. But he isn't really clear about what he's doing in order to achieve that vengeance and why he thinks that he needs vengeance. Even though Doctor Strange gets really involved in cosmic characters and cosmic goings-on in the MCU, protecting the MCU reality from threats from other dimensions, so he would theoretically be protecting Earth or watching Earth against threats from these other Egyptian gods, Khonshu would kind of be on his watch list. But the whole idea when Mark Spector becomes Moon Knight is the reason why Khonshu seems so obscure when you first hear about him is because in the last several hundred years, people of Egypt have stopped really caring about the gods. Like with the advent of cell phones, modern technology, people are worshiping that instead of the traditional gods like they did in the olden days. The whole idea with gods in the MCU is that they draw a lot of their power from the faith of their followers. It's a little bit different when you talk about Thor and the other Asgardian characters, for instance, because they're cosmic characters who seem kind of like gods, but they're like little G gods that just call themselves gods. They're not really taking that approach with Khonshu and the other Egyptian pantheon, like they are meant to be legit gods. They're not like secretly aliens pretending to be gods. So the whole idea is that in present day, people started to forget about Khonshu, some of the other gods, and they just became less and less powerful, less and less influential. But that doesn't mean that they're not powerful, so when Mark Spector dies in the right place, at the right time, Khonshu sees an opportunity to select a new avatar and says, look, I can make you very powerful, I have power, but I'm kind of limited in what I can do inside this version of reality. But recently, the actors have also been talking about the connection to the other MCU projects right now. So when they say that this series is not as connected to the MCU as some other stuff, what they mean is that this does take place in the MCU. There are a lot of deep connections to the MCU. It's just that every five seconds, they don't reference the Avengers and what they're doing at any given moment. It's a lot like the Black Panther movie didn't spend a ton of time after you get that sort of introduction to sort of bridge things from Civil War referencing what the Avengers are doing. But even though the Moon Knight series involves a lot of cosmic MCU figures like gods, the reason why people like Thor don't get involved because you think that he would get involved with higher level cosmic things is because when the Moon Knight series is going on, like I said, most people don't care about Khonshu, so he's not really on anyone's radar. And presently, like while the events of Moon Knight are going on, he's still off with the Guardians of the Galaxy. The events of Thor, Love and Thunder have not picked up yet. The series will have some sort of tag scene or some moment at the end that addresses Werewolf by Night because it's going to be sort of a bridge character to MCU Blade. But for instance, supernatural creatures and characters in the MCU, werewolves and vampires have always existed in the MCU. They've just been so low level, so off the radar. That's why you haven't heard about them in the mainstream Marvel Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3 movies. They did kind of mention vampires during Thor Ragnarok, so they have mentioned vampires. 
they might actually be releasing episode one and episode two this week instead of just episode one. So whatever they wind up releasing, I will do full episode videos for that. Make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss that. And leave all your video requests in the comments below if you have big questions about things. Everyone click here for my new Doctor Strange 2 video with new footage and Easter eggs. And click here for my other Moon Knight episode one video and learn about Moon Knight versus Conchu. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.